would you fly with an aircraft without a human pilot? Imagine you're on a journey to an, an amazing destination, your vacation. You board the aircraft, you get a warm welcome from the cabin crew, you try to catch a glimpse of the cockpit, but the only thing you see there is this. Would you still proceed to your seat? Would you sit back, relax and enjoy the flight? Would you trust this artificial intelligence, this AI pilot? I'm in charge of the bachelor's degree program in aviation at the Zurich University of Applied Sciences. And if I ask my students in their first semester, most of them say yes. Well, they were born with a smartphone in their hand. They grew up with technology. They have trust in technology. <laughs> they will board an aircraft without a human pilot, unhesitatingly. Come on, shall we? However, the further they progress in their curriculum, the more they learn about the complexity of the aviation system, the fewer would do it. On the other hand, I might look puzzled myself if I entered an elevator nowadays and spotted a lift buoy. The trust in the technology of an elevator had to be established and it took a generation to do so. We no longer need someone to push a numbered button for us. Tonight I'll talk about aircraft, about pilots, turbulence, the Hudson River, <laughs> about cats and dogs, and about how we could gain trust in artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence? That murky entity with an intransparent interface, inconceivably complex. How can we trust that? In a cockpit or anywhere else, sooner or later even everywhere. But I might not talk about lift boys anymore. From an engineering point of view, trust is hard to grasp. Trust cannot be measured. Trust cannot be proven. Still, we use computers in safety critical systems. Their tasks and duties are well defined. For any input value, the expected output is known and they are tested according to these specifications. And if they pass the tests, they are certified. And if they are certified, we trust them. They had to earn the trust through extensive testing. And as long as we remain within the scope of certification, everything works perfectly fine. As long as we remain within that boundary. But what happens beyond that boundary? What if something unanticipated occurs? Let us continue our flight to our vacation. Meanwhile, we have reached cruising altitude, the meals have been served, we passengers begin to chat, to read, to listen to music, and suddenly we are experiencing turbulences. Meal trays hover over the tables, peanuts fly through the cabin, smartphones fly through the cabin, and most passengers become very silent. And just a few passengers are, let's say, acoustically noticeable. And you are so glad you followed the recommendation to tighten and fasten your seatbelt whenever you are seated. In the cockpit, the pilots have tightened their seatbelt as well. The autopilot tries to maintain the wings level, but suddenly the pilots hear this. What's that? Well, that's the autopilot saying, Oh, excuse me, this is your autopilot. Sorry to disturb you lads, but the air up here is rather rough. It's beyond my scope of certification. You have to take over now. So, the turbulences are beyond the scope of certification of the autopilot. And the human has to take over. Beyond the scope of certification, you have to be ready for the unexpected. You need to have some experience. You might even need to be creative. But we can do that, because we are humans, because we have brains. So let's have a look at the humans, at the human pilots. It's a fact that 80% of the aviation accidents are caused by human factors, or at least as a contributing factor. 
80%. We have the numbers as each single accident is thoroughly investigated in order to get the lessons learned out of it, in order to improve the overall aviation safety. 80% of the accidents are caused by human factors. So, one might be tempted to say, well then, let's remove the human from the equation. This would reduce the number of accidents significantly. But this is wrong. This is a false inverse conclusion. We know that 80% of the accidents are caused by human factors. But we do not know how many accidents did not happen. Maybe because a human was on board. Because a human with experience and creativity was on board, preventing the accident from happening. Let me guide us to an example. The probability that one of the engines fails is remote, very remote. And even with a failed engine, the aircraft still flies and can land safely. The probability that both of the engines fail at the same time is beyond our imagination. Both engines failing simultaneously? No, not with me. Still, it happened. New York, January 2009. Shortly after takeoff, the A320 struck a flock of birds. Now, engines are tested for bird strikes. They are certified up to a certain bird size, but the scenario included quite a flock of birds. So the unimaginable happened. The twin engine the Airbus became a glider. There was no runway within reach, and all that in an urban area with tall buildings. A miracle then happened a perfectly executed water landing on the Hudson River with an incredibly generous portion of luck. All passengers and crews survived. The water landing was an out-of-the-box idea, a creative approach to resolve the situation. A creative approach that the pilots haven't been really trained for, but they did it. They did it right. So we humans have brains. We humans can do more than just what we have been trained for, and we humans can be creative. Conventionally engineered computers do not have brains. They cannot do more than what they have been programmed for. And their interpretation of creativity is maybe not what we want in a cockpit. But there is evidence that artificial intelligence might be able to cope with situations it hasn't been trained for. With AI, the scope could potentially be extended. Who knows? Maybe it's even possible to train an AI to fly an aircraft. But we do not know whether we can trust this AI pilot. Because an AI can learn and can change its behavior. An AI with some experience will not be the same as it has been during testing. So AI cannot be certified. We cannot certify creative computers. Still, we need something like certification, something to anchor our trust. But what? Could we think of another approach to gain trust in artificial intelligence? Indeed, in the whole aviation system, there is another murky element that can learn, that can be creative. The human being. So instead of trying to certify an artificial intelligence, why not License an artificial intelligence. Why not train an AI like a human pilot, check an AI like a human pilot to gain trust? With a bit of goodwill, there are some similarities between humans and AI, except maybe AI is a slow learner. You human beings needed maybe two or three pictures of a cat so you knew what a cat looks like and how to differentiate a cat from a dog. An AI needs more than just a handful of pictures, maybe hundreds, if not thousands. So instead of 200 flight hours for a pilot license, an AI pilot might need thousands of flight hours, because AI is a slow learner. Consequently, the training should be automated, because for so many hours of flight training, human flight instructors would be too expensive, and they would despair, given the shallow learning curve of AI pilots. So in the first step, we developed a formal language to specify flight training scenarios. 
A formal language can be understood by a computer, by an electronic flight instructor. This electronic flight instructor will instruct the AI pilot accordingly, automatically, and with angelic patience. The flight lessons are based on training syllabi for human pilots, and more challenging exercises could come from investigation reports of flight accidents and flight incidents. The training can be done day and night, even time-lapsed, and even with multiple flight lessons running in parallel. A very efficient training. Until the AI pilot has learned how to fly an aircraft, until countless impossible scenarios have been played through and solved to satisfaction, even if the flight ended up in the Hudson River, until the AI pilot has passed the check flight, got its license, earned its wings, until we have justifiable trust in the AI pilot after a long track of proof. This so-called anthropomorphic concept might contribute to some trust in artificial intelligence, in addition to other measures. The more trust we gain, the better. There is no such thing as too much trust. But trust has to be earned. And it takes a long track of proof to gain trust for some murky entity with an intransparent interface for an inconceivably complex AI. Interestingly, the concept is applicable to more than just pilot training. For example, air traffic control. Here as well, a license is required to do the job. And simulators are available, so no harm is done during the training of AI air traffic controllers. Or in autonomous driving. Why not apply the anthropomorphic concept to gain more trust? Again, there is no such thing as too much trust. And trust and safety are paramount in aviation. Letting an AI pilot fly an aircraft with passengers would be a disruptive change. And disruptive changes require utmost caution. Justifiable trust is fundamental. And until we have factual evidence to trust an AI pilot, we need human pilots. And yes, Flying aircraft is a wonderful job. This is why my fellow pilot colleagues keep telling me to stop this research project. They don't want to be made redundant. They want to keep their wonderful job. They want to keep pushing numbered buttons. So, I will not stop this research project because I want to be really sure whom we can trust.